I'm now on Battlefield 5 and I'm going to talk about the responsiveness of the monitor. This monitor supports a 144Hz maximum refresh rate and I've got the game running at a good solid 144 frames a second, so I'm making the most out of the monitor in that respect. This brings with its two main advantages. It improves the connected feel, which describes the precision and fluidity you feel when you're interacting with the game. It's also aided by low input lag, and that's certainly the case here. I measured 1.6 milliseconds of input lag in this case, so that indicates a low signal delay, which is the main element of input lag you feel. The other thing that the high frame rate, high refresh rate combination does is that it reduces the perceived blur due to eye movement. There's an article on the website all about monitor responsiveness, which explores this in more detail. But basically there are two main sources of perceived blur. There's that from the movement of your eyes, which is tightly linked to the refresh rate of the display and the frame rate of the content. And the other aspect is pixel responsiveness. And this monitor being OLED, I'm sure some of you are familiar, they are exceptional when it comes to pixel responsiveness. In the article, I explore a photography technique called pursuit photography, which can be used to highlight both aspects of perceived blur, so from your eye movement and the pixel responses of the monitor. So here you can see some pursuit photographs. They're at various refresh rates. Because it's an OLED monitor, it doesn't have overdrive settings, so we don't need to consider that. These aren't different overdrive settings, they're different refresh rates. 60 hertz, 120 hertz, and 144 hertz. So with increasing refresh rate, which would have an increasing matching frame rate, you can see the decrease in perceived blur due to eye movement, which you can see on the object itself. It's narrower and more sharply focused. And behind the object, you would see weaknesses in pixel responses. You can also see that with some of the fine details in the object itself as well. So if you compare the reference screen, which is also running at 144 Hz, to this monitor running at 144 Hz, you can see that the internal detail is clearer on the OLED. In reality, the black lines are actually more distinct than they appear. In both cases they are, but they are even more distinct on the OLED. And the white notches, they are also more distinct, but they're not countable. That would require a higher refresh rate, or it would require a different sampling method. So this is a sample and hold monitor. There's no strobe backlight or pixel strobing setting or anything like that. That's the kind of thing that's required to make those notches really visible. And behind the UFO, you can see some powdery trailing on the reference screen and there can be overshoot for other transitions. But with this monitor, you don't have to worry about overshoot or weaknesses from slower than optimal pixel responses. So it's just a visually perfect sample and hold 144 Hz experience. So even for the transitions which even fast IPS models will struggle with. I'm not saying the M27Q is the fastest IPS model out there. It isn't, but I like to use it as a reference because it's already at a level which most people are comfortable with. So anything that's faster than that is definitely a bonus, and this model certainly is. Little shadow details on the rocks there, the rock cracks with brighter shades and medium shades intermingling. Even fast IPS models will show some weaknesses. But here, there aren't such weaknesses, so even those little details just remain a bit crisper in motion. And there's no perceivable overshoot either, so you don't have to worry about that. And with these exceptional pixel responses from the OLED technology, yes, it, they are good candidates for high refresh rates than 144 Hz. And some of the competing models to this one, they are higher than that, 240 Hz. But the way that ASUS has positioned this is to be a little bit cheaper than the competing models, which is a bit counterintuitive for ASUS ROG Swift models. Usually it's the other way around. And also they've decided that actually with the 5120 by 1440 resolution, it is pretty demanding. It's not quite as demanding as 4K UHD. But for the kind of gaming that this monitor is really designed for, immersive gameplay, it's difficult to push your frame rates to 144 frames a second, let alone above that, even with quite a powerful system, especially if you've got the graphics settings ramped up a bit. I did say that I enjoyed competitive gaming on this monitor though, or playing more competitive titles, I should say. I was particularly enjoying Battlefield 2042 because of the incredible field of view, which does give a competitive edge. And yes, it would be nice to have a high refresh rate technically, but again, with the resolution in mind, it would be quite difficult to push all the way to 240 hertz. I really side a bit more with Isis's way of thinking, with the resolution being demanding, this sort of monitor designed mainly for immersive gameplay. With all of that in mind, 144 hertz is actually a decent refresh rate. I'm on another scene on Battlefield 5, and I have used my ultra-wide lens again, so I can see the entire super ultra-wide screen all at once. Again, nothing to complain about in the way of pixel responses. Absolutely 
visually flawless sample and hold 144 hertz experience no overshoot to speak of the monitor supports VRR, variable refresh rate technologies that includes adaptive sync, so you can use NVIDIA G-Sync compatible and AMD FreeSync, and it also has HDMI 2.1 VRR support, which you could use on the PS5, which doesn't even support adaptive sync. So plenty of options here to keep the refresh rate synchronized with the frame rate where possible. The claimed range of operation is 48 to 144 Hz. Although in practice, it does depend on the fluctuations occurring, which isn't specific to this model. It's just something which I've observed more generally. So sometimes it seems that 55 hertz is the floor of operation or closer to that is the floor of operation. But it does support LFC, low frame rate compensation. So below that, the monitor will stick to a multiple of the frame rate with its refresh rate to keep tearing and stuttering at bay. There's a slight stuttering when the boundary is passed, that's something which isn't specific to this monitor, but it always occurs. But it's a subtle stuttering. It isn't the same as the kind of stuttering you'd get with VRR disabled, with frame and refresh rate mismatches. So not everyone will notice it, but if you're frequently passing the boundary, it's something to be aware of. And because of the exceptional clarity of the OLED screen, this stuttering can be somewhat more noticeable. And actually stuttering in general can if you're not using a VRR. It's also worth noting that if you're watching low frame rate content, 24 frames a second, for example, for certain movie content. Then the exceptional pixel responses, again, mean that stuttering and, and juddering can be a bit more noticeable there. It's not something that everyone is sensitive to, and either way, a low frame rate is a low frame rate, and that applies with VRR as well. The game is now running at 80 frames a second, the monitors are 80 hertz, and there isn't an increase in overshoot. There are no overshoot issues regardless of the refresh rate on this monitor, so that is nice to see although it's something you would expect from OLED, just something not, not everyone's aware of, so it's worth mentioning. And no weaknesses in pixel responses again. The same at 60 hertz, 60 hertz, 60 frames a second now. And if you do see anything, it's either from your own monitor or an artifact captured from the camera or something in the game. But as I mentioned, lower frame rates are still lower frame rates, so the connected feel is nowhere near as good as it was at 144 hertz. And there is an increase in perceived blur, not from the pixel responses, but just link to the refresh rate and eye movement. I'm now going to run a VRR flickering test. That's something you may worry about, and this is typical for OLEDs, but I do have to go through it. Well, okay, the flickering is not exactly terrible, but it is there. This occurs in a variable refresh rate environment. There are some slight gamma changes for dark and medium dark shades, which occur when the refresh rate is fluctuating. And this particular test causes huge fluctuations in frame rate, very rapid fluctuations in frame rate, which translates to fluctuations. So I'm getting a bit sick of saying fluctu changes in refresh rate on the monitor. And you can see that in the video, hopefully, and see it particularly for these darker shades here. It doesn't occur for brighter shades. The gamma changes aren't apparent there. It's just for the darker shades and some of the medium dark shades as well. So sort of up to this part of the gradient, really. It's not something which everyone's sensitive to or will notice, and it does require some fluctuation in refresh rate. So if there are just slight changes, it's not really going to be an issue. And if your frame rate's nice and stable, it's not going to be an issue. I've been using an RTX 3090 for this review, just in case you're wondering. And a lot of the time I can have quite stable frame rate. Certainly don't generally get the kind of fluctuations I'm seeing in this test. But even so, in some scenes you can get sudden drops or sudden changes in the frame rate, which can cause this kind of behavior because it affects the darker shades more. In some scenes you won't be able to notice it anyway, but in some you certainly can. And again, it's just one of those things. It's typical for OLED and it is something which occurs here. Some VA models have much more noticeable VRR flickering. What I would say about this one is I find it more noticeable than I do on my own Alienware AW3423DW, which has a G-Sync module, which doesn't eliminate VRR flickering, but it does offset it a little bit.